Hello wonderful people, it's Wild here. Today I'll be showing you over 20 decorations to upgrade your village or town. When creating a village or town, a very important step is adding in decorations. They help bring your world to life and create a story. And they provide lots of visual interests when exploring your world. In this tutorial, I'll show you decor to use all throughout your town and keep in mind you can always change up blocks to make it any of these builds fit any aesthetic. The materials for each of the builds will be shown in a chest before we get started. And keep in mind there are timestamps below so you can find the item you want. Here are the materials we'll need for our covered wagon. I've also got some temporary blocks here as well. I'm going to start by making two rows of four with my temporary blocks spaced three apart. I'm going to have my wagon so it's traveling along this way. And then gonna place in my four hoppers and I'm clicking on the temporary block so that they're angled outwards like this. I'll then connect them up on three sides, leaving the side in the direction I'm traveling open. I'll use some spruce trapdoors now to fill in this gap, followed by a slab and then a few more of my trapdoors. So it should look like this. I'm gonna use oak trapdoors for the wheels of the wagon and I'll place in two more slabs here and here. Now let's go in with some barrels. I'm placing them so the handles are facing towards the back like this, and I'll need some temporary blocks to place in the last two. And then finally we have one in the center here facing upwards. I'll place some trapdoors along the back here, and then I'm going to use some spruce stairs to connect these up. Next, let's grab some white wool to create the covered part of the wagon. I'll place four along each side. Then using a temporary block, I can add four along the top. I'm going to place some rails going over each of the sides. And let's swap out some of these items from our inventory now. So I can add in some ladders here and here. And here and here. We've got a bunch of signs to add. If you're in creative, you can use the middle click with control to select the item without any writing. So that way I can place them all the way around like this. There we go. I'm going to be using four spruce gates for the handles of the wagon. I need to make a little seat next. I'm going to be placing a spruce trapdoor on this here rail. So I'm holding shift and then I can click on the rail itself to place in the trapdoor. And that way I can hang a lantern from it like that. So now we can take a step back and we've got a completed wagon with built in storage. this merchant wagon, you'll need the following materials. Keep in mind that you can switch out the green woolen carpet for whatever colour you like. I'm going to start by placing a row of four temporary blocks, then count four blocks over, and on the fifth block I'll place another row of four so they're parallel like this. I'll have hoppers going into the end too, and I can remove these temporary blocks now. And our hoppers are facing outwards like this. I'm then going to place in a two by four rectangle of slabs. And I'll go along the front and the back of the wagon with some trapdoors. And fill in these gaps with some more spruce trapdoors. Next, I'm going to place some spruce slabs on top of these two hoppers. And I'm going to create a little 2x3 rectangle out of a temporary block. I'm going to be placing the stairs upside down so that they're facing towards these slabs. 
and then we'll have two barrels here and two barrels there and then finally some more spruce stairs going across the back and I can remove these temporary blocks so we've got a base like this. Now I need to create the canopy for this wagon. I'm going to start by placing four of my spruce fences in the corners like this. I'm going to place green carpet on top of here and here and then I'll use some temporary blocks so that I can place in wool to create a little archway. The next archway is going to be at a white wall and we're going to be going up an extra block like this and arching back down again like that. We'll have a stripe of a green wool and another stripe of white wool. I'll then use a temporary block and place them one away from the fence like that so I can place in some hanging spruce signs. You can also place the name of your traveling merchant on here. I'm going to place green carpet on top of each of these and then to finish off this canopy I'll place in my final two green wool here. So you can see it's got a nice curved shape to it. I'm going to add in my little seat next using a dark oak stair and some signs which I'll place on either side. And then I'll use two fence gates here and here for the handles of the wagon. Let's swap out our inventories again and grab out all of our decoration material. So I've got eggs, a skeleton, a skull, some lanterns, a couple minecarts and chests, and then our last few materials here and I can put away my temporary block. I'm going to place my pot in here and we want to fill this up with different goodies and things that our merchant might be selling. So I'm going to place a chest here. Let's have a chest over on this side and hmm, where can we put one more chest? have one in here like that. Let's rotate it so it's that way. Then I'm going to use my rail so that I can place in a hopper, a chest in a minecart and this will give me a slightly different shape. You can also give it a nudge just to change its direction a little bit and you can play around with this until you get a look you're happy with. I'm going to have two of these in here. You can see to break the rail I'm going to be looking so I'm underneath the minecart but I'm not looking at the spruce slab below. And then let's squeeze in here and give this a nudge. And this just adds a little bit more movement to the build when everything's not squared off. And over that way. There we go. I'm going to add in a few more decorations. We've got some sea pickles here. Let's have a cluster of three. I've got some turtle eggs. I have three over here. I'm going to place in some lanterns. Let's put one here and one over at the front. And then finally, I've got my skeleton skull, which I'm going to have at the back here. And last but not least for this wagon, we need to add some wheels. And for that, I'm using some oak trapdoors. And our merchant wagon is complete. This hay cart would be a great addition to a farm or market and you could modify it to be a mining cart by switching out these hay bales for perhaps some ores or copper. Let's grab out all of these supplies now and get building. I'm going to start by placing in two temporary blocks spaced three blocks apart to direct my hoppers into and I can break those. I'm going to be placing a spruce trapdoor in between those like this and coming one back. I'm then going to place one of my hay bales on top of here so that way I can add a slab to either side. Now I'll need to break into the ground one block to place in my hanging signs and I'm going to want to place them so that they're just hanging from their two chains like this. And I can go ahead and place the ground back. There we go. We've got some more trapdoors to add in here. Let's have them come along one more this way like this. Then we've got our spruce fences and I'll place trapdoors on top of here and here. And then one more in the center. I'm also going to place one more trapdoor on top of this hopper. I'll place my seat in here now and the handles for the hay wagon coming two out from those fences. We've got to place some more hay on top of this wagon so that we'll pile it up nice and high and have one coming off to that side. There you go. And you can go ahead and change the directions of some of this hay 
that just gives it a more randomized look. We have a few more trapdoors coming across the back now and we're using some oak trapdoors for the wheels of the wagon. We're almost there but I'm going to grab out some lanterns next and place one here and on top of this back bale of hay. For this charming swing set we'll only need a few supplies. You could customise this to be made of any colour wood you like. I'm going to start by placing in my two walls spaced three blocks apart. I'll then have two fences on top of each. Then we've got some stairs and we're going to create the archway with these. In between them I've got a spruce trapdoor and a slab on top and trapdoors on either side to create a nice smooth curve. Now for the swing itself. I'm going to hang a chain down from each of these stairs and a hanging sign off of that. There we go. For the seat of my swing I'll use three spruce trapdoors and then finally we need to add a back onto the swing using some oak trapdoors. Wouldn't that be so pretty in a park? For this picnic bench we'll be using campfires for the seat. I'm going to decorate with a cake and some candles and you'll also need a shovel to put out the campfires. I'll place in my campfires spaced one apart and then I can use the shovel by right clicking to put them out. We'll finish off these chairs with some signs as well. Then we'll create a table out of some spruce trapdoors. I'm holding shift to place these two onto each other and finishing off with our decorations. For this lush gazebo we'll be using big drip leaves for the posts. We'll also need some oak and some campfires, some azaleas, some azalea leaves, and then some decorative blocks. I'm going to start by placing in three big drip leaves on top of each other like this. Then I'll count three over and place three more so that they're facing towards each other. I'll go three over again and build up three and then three over again and build up three. So we've got four all spaced three apart like this in a square. I'm going to place campfires on top of each of these now. And I'm going to grab out my shovel so that I can put these out as I go. Like this. We're going to be needing some temporary blocks now and I'm going to place these diagonally in from each of the campfires on the corner. And I'm going to use this to create some archways with the stairs upside down. Now on this particular front one I'm also going to place an azalea leaf in here. For the rest of the sides I'll go around and place in two of these upside down stairs. And I can break those temporary blocks. Now joining those up we're going to have an oak slab. Like this to create a circle. And then for the top we're going to be using campfires but before we do that we're going to add in a few leaves just like this and coming over this way and then I'll fill in the remaining gaps with the campfires and put those out as well. I'm then going to finish off the top here by draping some leaves down the sides. We'll have some here, one coming over this way and we'll come in front over this way as well. So here's how the gazebo should be looking. Now we need to decorate. Keeping in with the lush theme I'm going to be using azaleas for the table. I want this centered underneath my gazebo so I'll place three along here. I'm using campfires for the seats as well and it's up to you whether you have them facing long ways like this 
or in the other direction. I just like to make sure they're all facing the same way. I'll then be using some signs for the backs of these chairs. And I'm going to decorate my table with a few candles and a pot with a little topiary tree. Let's create a hanging farm design. You'll need these materials. You can always swap out the wood for whatever style of wood matches your build. I'm going to start by placing in my stone brick walls and I'm going to be counting five across so there is a five block gap between them. I'm then going to add three oak fences on top of each and then a spruce trapdoor. I'm going to use a temporary block next to place in some stairs here and here and then a slab coming out from each of those. We've got a spruce trapdoor in between and then on top of here and here and finally one more slab. So we've got a nice archway. Now let's create the planter itself. We'll hang down one chain length on either side, followed by a hanging oak sign. I'm going to be using some temporary blocks building three across like this so that I can place in some upside down stairs. And I'm going to surround this whole thing using some of the spruce trapdoors, including underneath. I'll just need to break in to do this. Let's remove that now and we can place in our farmland on either side and I'll quickly grab out my water to fill in the gap between. Now to disguise this water I'm going to grab some birch leaves which I'll place over the top like this and I'm going to plant a wheat and a beetroot. Let's let it grow. Now that they're grown you can see how lush it looks. Now every town needs a well and these are the supplies you'll need to create it. I'm going to start by digging down three blocks. Then on the fourth block I'm going to dig and replace it with a stone brick. I'll also line the sides of my well with some more stone brick. I'm going to build up using some chains and I'll go ahead and waterlog each of those like this. Next I'll place in a chiseled stone brick and some stairs wrapping around to create the base of the well and I'll place in two more chains and just waterlog the one that's in line here with the chiseled. Building up here we're going to place in two stone brick walls and our two oak fences. Then I'm going to use a temporary block and grab out some of my other supplies here. And I'll place three of my hay bales going across like that. I can then hang my grindstone from the hay bales to create this pulley system. Next I'm going to take oak trapdoors and I'm placing them by clicking on these oak fences and then the grindstone here or on top of the other trapdoors in this row. And we're placing them here so that way we can place oak stairs on top as well as some rails. Like that. Next we're going to go in with the lever and I'm going to flip that down and hang a chain off of it like that. And there we go, we've got a wonderful looking well. This water pump design uses the new decorator pots. Now of course you could go with one with a design on it but I've just got a plain pot here. Let's grab out these supplies and start by creating the pump. I'm placing in a log with a stair and a log on top. Then we've got two spruce slabs coming out from here and we'll build up the back using some spruce trapdoors. I'll place in my decorated pot and a fence at the top and then I'm using some of my light blue stained glass to create the look of the flowing water. I'm also going to use a chain and a lever to create the handle of the pump. You can see I'm hanging the chain off of the lever itself. 
Now let's make the trough section. I'll dig out three blocks and place in three of the stripped spruce logs. And then I'll go ahead and surround it using some of these trapdoors. And to finish it off, I'm going to grab out a water bucket and have it flow out of this stair. And I'm going to fill up the trough as well. This means you also have an infinite water source. This pile of logs can be done with any type of wood, however I prefer to use oak as it matches well with the campfire wood. I'm going to start by laying out my large logs. I'll go five across for the first one. I'm going to set the next one one log back but also have it five long so it'll stick out the end by one like this let's go up a level and we're going to go along four this time and for the final grouping of logs let's have it go one two three along there like this we'll add in our straps on these logs Tying the log bundle together. There we go. And then the campfires, you see if I put out the fire with my shovel here, look like a miniature versions of stacks of logs. So I'm going to place a few of these around here. One over here and two over here. And I can put them out. Doesn't that look great? Oh, one more campfire there. I don't want to set my log pile on fire. For this wheelbarrow, I'm going to be using a minecart with a hopper. I'm going to start by placing a temporary block so that way I can have my grindstone going into it like this. Then I can remove that and on either side of that space I'm going to add in a trapdoor. In between them I'll place in a rail with my minecart and hopper and then I'll remove that rail so it drops down onto the ground like this. And to finish off I'm going to add a opened up the gate like that for the handles. For this next barrow, we're going to be placing a carved pumpkin inside. So we're going to be using an armor stand here and we'll need some redstoning supplies in the form of a piston and a lever. I'm going to start by digging out one block in the ground like this, where I'll place my armor stand with a carved pumpkin on top. I'm then going to grab some of my ground block, so in my case I've got my grass block here, and I'll place it above my carved pumpkin. I'll then build up and place in a piston facing downwards like this, and I'm going to power it once, place a cauldron in the gap, power it again, and I can remove this whole setup and you can see that we now have a pumpkin sitting inside our cauldron. To finish off this wheelbarrow, we'll place in a grindstone and I've got a dark oak fence gate to match. And then we've got our wheels on either side. Isn't that so cute? For this signpost, we're going to be using decorated pots. And of course, you can have one with a fancy design on it to add a little extra flair. I'll start by creating the main part of the post by placing in a brick with a decorated pot on top. I'm then going to build up too high with a temporary block so I can hang my oak signs off to either side. And you could easily have more than just the two signs by hanging off signs in other directions like this, but I'm just going to go with the two here. I can then replace these temporary blocks with walls building up three high. I'll have a gate coming out above each of the signs and then a fence off of that. And I want to finish off the post here with a flower pot on top. I'm going to grab out some lanterns and hang these from the fences. And to tie it all together, I'm going to add some oak trap doors around the bottom. Now let's add some places to here. To create arrows, I'm using the arrow on my keyboard and then adding in a few little dashes like this. And let's have this sign go to the town center and maybe this one, which I'll direct in the opposite direction. 
is going to take me to the mill house. Here are the supplies we'll need for our bell. This is perfect for our town crier. You can do this out of any wood, but I've chosen oak. I'm going to start by creating the post. And I'm going to use a temporary block so I can place my log on the side like this to get the interior texture. We're almost there with the post itself. Let's grab out our other supplies. I'm going to hang the bell from here. We've got a grindstone with a chain at the back. And now to give the bell a rope to ring it with, I'm going to dig two blocks down here and put a chicken in there. You could walk one over in survival. I'll place a trapdoor over the top, grab the chicken with the lead, close the trapdoor again, and then I'll connect it to the fence above the bell. And here's the finished look. You can see the rope connecting up to the bell there, ready to ring it. For style one of a market stall, I'm designing it to be a bakery, but you could swap out the decorations and use the shape to sell any sort of thing at a market. And you can customize it by changing out the colors of your wool and your banners. Let's start by creating the base for the market stall. I'm going to be placing in a mossy stone brick wall, counting three across and placing in another. I'll then count two back and add in two more parallel like this. I'm going to create some benches next using some spruce stairs and slabs. There we go. And I'm going to add in some spruce fences now. Now for the back, I'm going to use a temporary block and then hang three hanging spruce signs along like this. And I'm going to add some text to my sign for my market stall. Fresh baked goods. I can remove that temporary block now and I'm going to add in two more temporary blocks. This time I'm placing the one back from the fences so I can place in some upside down stairs off of them like this. There we go. I'm then going to add red wool on top of these two posts and a stair coming off behind them. And I'll connect them with a spruce trapdoor and I'll add three spruce trapdoors coming along on the front here. Now let's work on the rest of the canopy. So I'll have my wool going three back behind each of those. Then we have a white stripe, which I'm going to go up one, then use a temporary block, come across two and then down at the back. And we're going to follow the same shape for the last three, two stripes in a group of three like this. Now for some decorations, let's swap out our inventory here. And this is where you can get a bit creative. I'm going to hang some banners down the back here like this. I'll place in a couple of chests. Let's put one here and one up here. And since it's bakery, I've got some cakes, cookies, and bread, of course. And to add to the signage, I'm going to add a bread to the top here with two signs on either side. There we go. That looks marvelous. And you could really customize it to sell anything. Perhaps it could be a blacksmith stall. For this next style of market stall, here's what you'll need. I'm styling it as a florist's shop. So I've got a whole load of flowers. Let's start by making the base of the shop itself. And you can customize this by switching out the color of the wool. I'm going to start by using my temporary blocks. I'll place one at the front left corner, then I'll count three blocks over and place another one. I'm going to use this to place some oak stairs in, and I can remove those temporary blocks. I'll connect these with three spruce trapdoors. Now on one side I'm going to place in an oak slab, and on the other side I'll have an oak trapdoor. I'll then place in two more temporary blocks to put in my other two stairs creating a nice bench top like this. 
I'm also going to use some temporary blocks to place in a row of barrels at the back. And I can remove those now. Let's grab some more oak trapdoors. I'm going to build up two high all the way across the five wide shape. And then I'll place an extra three in the center. One, two, three. And I'm flipping these up. I'll also create some shelves by placing a couple more trapdoors in like this. Now in our corners, I'm going to add in some of these polished deep slate walls and some of the fences on top. Here's how the base of it is looking. I've switched out the supplies in my inventory so we can work on the top now. I'm going to add carpet on top of here and here. I'll add in a block of wool behind here. You can use a temporary block to place this in, but I'm just clicking on the edge of the carpet. I'll then add a string behind these two wool and a carpet on top of that, and then finish off with a block behind here. For the next layer, we're going up a little bit. So we're gonna add in a white wool block, then we'll come up and then we're gonna go back and back again. And we'll do the same thing for the final two stripes Finishing with a pink wool in the very center just to add it to the curved shape. I've grabbed out all of my decorating supplies, so let's get decorating. I'm going to add a planter here in the front, and I'm going to use a couple decorated pots here. For this planter, I'm going to place in a flowering azalea, and then we've got some pots. I'm placing one in each of the decorated pots. Let's have one at the front, maybe one over here, and some along the back as well. And of course, up on this shelf. I'm then going to create two larger pots. Let's place one maybe back here and one on this side as well. And you can play around with the location of these until you get a look that you're happy with. I might have mine here and here. Let's swap out these blocks for some of our flowers. I'm going to surround these coarse dirt blocks with some spruce trapdoors to finish off the look of these pots. And I'll plant a rose bush in that one. Let's just fill up these with different colours. I think it's fun to have a variety of colours going on here and I'd like to distribute them well throughout the build. Grab out the rest of my flowers. Ooh, and one more. Let's put in another one of these cornflowers, perhaps. Or even better, an azalea. There we go. And over here we have a lilac. And to finish off our market stall, let's add a sign. Flores. Flowers. Here's what we'll need to create an archery range. Let's start by creating some of the targets. I'm going to have these at various heights and I'm placing some hay bales in and around as well. Now if your targets are not in exactly the same place as mine, that's totally okay. You just want to have them kind of staggered. Let's have one maybe here I think next that looks like good spacing to me and then I'm going to have my armor stand about here and I'm placing some leather armor on that we'll also place a few bales of hay in and around here you can see I'm using some of these temporary blocks just to change up the direction of some of these bales there we go and I might add in my final target on top of there perfect Okay, now let's swap out these supplies for some more. We've got some of our decorations in here and I'll come back for those in just a bit. I'm going to be using a few spruce leaves and it's up to you how many you add here, just to frame the back of here by creating a rambling hedge like this. You can add as many or as little leaves to this as you like, but I'm going to create Kind of natural curve shape like that. I'll step back and see if I like the shape and I can always adjust it as I go. I think that looks good. 
going to add a little bit of fencing coming to either side. And I've got a barrel on this side. Like that. And now we need to add some more of the decorations. I'm adding in a Fletcher's table here. I'm going to add some trapdoors around the bases of a couple of these targets. Like that. And I'm going to grab out my final decorations now and place some of these on the ground. We'll add an arrow up here. Put maybe our bow down here. Another arrow over on this side. And finally our crossbow. For this cannon design, we'll be using some Wither Skeleton Skulls as cannonballs. Let's start by creating the cannon itself. Starting with a hopper with a polished deep slate on top. I'm opening my gate looking away from the cannon like this so that it opens outwards. If I open it from the other side, it's opening inwards. So I want it that way around. Add a lever on top and I like to pile up my skulls all to one side for the cannonballs and I like to have them at differing angles like this. And let's have one shooting out of the cannon as well. I think I'll have it about here. There we go, our cannons firing and protecting the town. Here's what you'll need to create this watchtower. You could create several of these around your village. And you can customize it to fit your kingdom by changing out the wood and the color of your wool. For the base, we're just building up two high, one apart, and four posts like this with our stone brick walls. I'm also going up two high on top of these with some spruce fences. And again, too high with some stripped spruce logs. Like that. Now on three of the sides, I'm placing my spruce trapdoors onto this lower log. And then on the fourth side, I will go up and place it on the lower level of the upper log. That way, where I can come underneath and place in oak trapdoors going down to the bottom of the tower. And I can place ladders on these trapdoors. Now if you can't place trapdoors in here as you're on bedrock, you could replace these here trapdoors with barrels going up and place your ladders on that. That looks great too. Next I'm going to use some hanging signs to create the railing. And to fill in the gap in the center, I'm going to grab out my spruce slabs. And I'll place that in there and you can see that it sits just below a little bit. Let's continue going up. I'm going to need my spruce fences and I'll place one on top like this. Followed by my stone brick walls. And I'll connect these up with some gates. There we go. On to creating the roof of the tower now. I'm going to start by making a little square like this and I'll have slabs coming out of the center of each side and trapdoors on either side of that. Moving up the point now, I'm going to add in a spruce plank followed by a spruce stair. I'll use a temporary block now to add in one more spruce plank which I can then go ahead and creep inside this tower to remove and I'm going to grab out my fences to finish off the spire by adding in three on the top. So here's how the basic shape is looking. I've reorganized my inventory now to finish off the decoration 
I'm going to add a flag to the top of this tower. And if you're building several of these, I recommend building the curve of your flag slightly different each time, but make sure it's always facing the same direction. Got some stone buttons going around these logs here. And then finally, some of my spruce signs. You can customize this guard statue by switching out the colors of the wool to match your kingdom. Let's grab out these supplies and start working on the base of our guard. I'm going to place in four chiseled stone brick and two stone brick in the center. And then I'm going to go around with upside down and right way upstairs. Now on to the statue itself. We've got a cauldron followed by an anvil followed by a smooth stone. I'm going to place in a cobblestone wall to one side and a stone brick wall to the other and I can then place anvils on top of this. And I've got one more cobblestone wall coming out from here. Let's grab out our other supplies. I'm using an observer for our soldier's head, making sure that I have his face facing forward. And we've got some iron trapdoors. Now let's create a flag. We want him holding the banner nice and high. And I'm going to have my flag kind of drifting off to one side. So I'll be using some placeholder blocks just so I can create the curve that I'm looking for. Doesn't that look grand? So now you've got a beautifully decorated village. Be sure to leave a comment with your favorite decor. And if you'd like to see some more inspiration for builds and decorations, check out my channel. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me out. And check out my Patreon for some other benefits. I'll see you in another video.